Boaz, with whose servant girls you have been, a kinsman of ours. Tonight he will be a winnowing barley. Tonight he will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Wash and perfume yourself and put on your best clothes. Come on, turn your neighbor and say, put on your best clothes. Then go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know you are there until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, note the place where he is lying. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down. He will tell you what to do, and I will do whatever you say, she says. So she went down to the threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law told her to do. And when Boaz had finished eating and drinking, he was in good spirits. He went over to lie down at the far end of the grain pile. Ruth approached quietly, uncovered his feet, and lay down. And in the middle of the night, something startled the man. Something. I know what it was. Do you know what it was? Mm. It was something that startled him. And he said to her, mm. He, the Bible says that he lied down. Ruth approached quickly, and she says, who are you? He says, I am your servant, Ruth. Spread the corner of your garment over me since you are a kinsman redeemer. How many people believe God has got to do something special this week? Amen? Amen? Would you bow your heads with me? Father, today we thank you for the word of God. We thank you that the grass wither and the flower fadeth, but the word of the Lord abideth forever. Today, God, we recognize it's not my word, but your word that brings transformation to the hearts of men. And we pray today, God, that you would do what you only do, and we give you praise in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. amen. Please, Mike, work what you got to do. Mm. Today, I'm going to be teaching on the staging season. Mm -hmm. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's a setup. It's a setup. It's a setup. I don't know about you. I'm going to go ahead and just switch me mic so I don't have to worry about the delay in my voice. But I, I, I've been staging things all my life when I'm my. Thank you. I'm going to switch to this mic. Amen. That's better. Uh, when I was uh, moving from one place to the next place, the, the biggest rock that you ever have to stage is your house. And if you know anything about staging houses, it, that, that the dynamic of a staging is important to the cell. You can bring me down because I'm going to be hollering in this mic in just a little bit. The staging of a mic, the, the staging of a mic, that's exactly right. The staging of a house. The staging of a house is so important. I remember when we were transitioning, we were not where we, uh, uh, we were in between two places. We had uh, already uh, been invited to this church in Houston. We were already preparing to sell our house. And, and if you know anything about staging, they tell you you got to declutter. You got to take down all the pictures. You got to remove all of the furniture. If you've ever been to my house, if you've ever been to my house, you will know that my wife is an interior designer by trade. She, thank God, she started to work on this house because I was afraid of what she was going to do during the pandemic in my house. Because if we're not careful, my house would be completely renovated and it was already a brand new house. Y'all get what I'm trying to communicate. Uh, but and, and she was staging, and when she was started the staging process, it was a purging process because we had we had kids that were little, and they were they were sitting, and they were they had this big old playroom, and they would be playing, and they had all these toys, and I knew that if we were going to be able to sell the house, we had to get rid of all those toys, and how many know uh, uh, getting rid of all those toys and getting rid of all the stuff was going to take some time? Mm -hmm. But we wanted to sell. Because we recognize that this move was not going to be a vertical move. This was not going to be a horizontal move as much as it was going to be a vertical move. That God was not just going to move us from one place to the next place. But God was going to move us from one level to the next level. And it's so important today if you're going to go to the next level. I'm not just talking from one side to the other side. I'm not talking about from, from front to back, from east to west. I'm talking about from God taking you from faith to faith and from glory to 
glory. I, I, I'm talking to some people that believe that God is setting up your promotion. How many believe that God is about to elevate your life? God is about to elevate this church. God is about to do what he's been promising us for years, for months, for days. There's been an elevation process. Are you prepared for what God has already prepared for you? I, I just got to ask the question, are you prepared for what God has already prepared for you are you going to be prepared for the promotion because I need you to see this that preparation always precedes promotion mm. preparation always precedes promotion it's so important we see that and the Bible tells us that there is some steps to prepare in the process of promotion that Naomi has recognized the favor of God on Ruth she has recognized that this is not happenstance this is not just coincidence this isn't just chance or luck this is something greater that's happening in her life she recognizes that this is about to be something significant in her life and she is wanting to prepare her she doesn't want to mess up the moment of promotion she wants us, her to be prepared have you ever been unprepared for what God had for you it's a scary thing it's always scary to come unprepared I've Preach messages and I preach messages unprepared. I don't know if you knew it, but I went home and I knew that that was a horrible job. It's always important that you prepare for what God. And so in the process, there's some steps. And the first step that we see is the Bible tells Na that Naomi said you need to purify or to wash yourself. Now, when we talk about washing, this was not just a, uh, just a regular washing. This was something of a ceremonial washing. This was a purification process. This was something that was bigger than just doing the daily process, but this was something about preparation because she wanted her to be clean and ready for what God was going to do in your, her Life. Let me tell you something today. God wants you to purify. All this week, God is asking us to purify our hearts. Mm. You know, I, I just did a devotion yesterday, and I was talking about the smudges and how if you're not careful, you can live through the smudges. I did a whole conversation about glasses. I didn't wear glasses today. I should have wore glasses today. Last week I wore my new red frames and, and it, it's, it's one of those things as I wear the glasses I, 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 I'm very careful not to put my finger on them. I, I, there's a tendency to touch your glasses when they are new and, and, uh, and, and, and unintentionally I get smudges on the glasses and if you're not careful you can actually not be aware of the smudges. It's only when you take the glasses off that you see the, the fingerprints or the oil that's been built up. And it's so easy to live our lives through the smudges. And it's the smallest smudges that make the greatest alterations in our vision. Mm. Can I tell you something today? God wants to remove the soil and the stain and, and that contaminates our hearts. How many of you know today our hearts need to be purified today our hearts today let me tell you something that God wants to purify our selfishness our stubbornness our our satisfied posterity he wants us to clean our hearts he wants to remove the stains remove the sin remove the toxins today God wants to cleanse us and purify us and prepare us for what he has but can, can I tell you something that a pure heart can go farther than the gifts and the talents that are available in your life Life, that a pure heart, that when, when God will honor a pure heart, let me tell you something today. When man looks at you, they see your talent, they see your education, they see your pedigree, they see your ability. But when God looks at you, he looks at your heart. He'll bypass the good looking. He'll bypass the, the somebody. 
things. He'll bypass a lot of things and a lot of stuff that's on a lot. That's the accolades of men. But he'll find somebody like a David, like a David out there in the shepherds, uh, out there with the sheep. Uh, David just singing praises to God. A little 16-year-old little boy. God will pass everybody and anoint David, anoint you just because you got a pure heart. God says, blessed are those who are pure in heart, for they shall see God. Anybody want to see the Lord? Anybody want to see God bless your life? God doesn't bless you because you're good looking. God doesn't bless you because you're aging. God blesses you because you got a pure heart, a broken and contrite spirit. God will not despise. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, God wants to purify your life today. He wants to purify. He not only wants to purify, he wants to have some presence on you. He doesn't want to just take some things off of you. He wants to put some things on you. She didn't, he didn't, she didn't just tell him to wash. She said, I want you to put some oil on you. I want you to oil, perfume your, your body, perfume yourself to prepare yourself for this presentation. God wants to prepare you to present you. I don't know about you. I, 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 I'm familiar with aromas. Smells have cognitive uh, connections to be able to create images. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I know you hadn't hollered back in a while, but you, you need to help me today. Indeed, or don't hold back. You may be the only one in the audience, but you got to holler. If you're watching online, you got to put an amen, Pastor. I, I hear you. What you talking about? Make it plain. I'm just trying to tell you today. It makes me be preach better. I, I don't like putting out the table and y'all looking at me all picky and, uh, and just poking at the food. I need you to say, mm, yes, Lord, I, I know what you're talking about. Just had to put that parenthetically into the place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I can remember going into my grandmother's house, my grandmother's house, my grandmother Strong's house. She it smelled like a bucket of chicken. Mm, when you walked in, you could smell. She wasn't even frying chicken, but she'd fried so much chicken that it was in the wallpaper. It was in the carpet. Come on. You walk in and, my God, Lord, frying. That's what it smelled like. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> My grandfather, he, when he passed away, he, they gave me his coat. And even though when they gave me his coat, I didn't even notice. But when I picked it up, it smelled like my grandfather. Oh, I wish today I still got the coat, but the smell is gone. The aroma has left. There's just something about the smell. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about. You know what it smells like when somebody burns popcorn. Nothing worse, Kendall, for one of the kids to put in the popcorn, put in the popcorn, and burn the popcorn. And then not only burn the popcorn, but put it in the trash can after they done. You don't need to put the popcorn in the trash. You need to take the popcorn bag out. Side. Come on, somebody. You got to take that somewhere else. You got to put that, you got to put that in three bags. Lock it up. Put it in the trash can. Take the trash can all the way to the curb and pray that tomorrow somebody picks it up. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to tell you. And there is also a smell on you today that when the presence of God comes on you today, when I tell you there's an aroma, that there's an aroma that's on you. Can I tell you that the aroma that awakened, it was the aroma. It was the, that, that something, that wasn't a something, that was a someone. That was the aroma of the presence of God. Let me tell you what the aroma do. The aroma will go before you. The aroma will come beside you. The aroma will come behind you. Can I tell you, God will put a presence on you that will cause things to open up over your life, uh, cause people to awaken to the work uh, that God is doing. Can I tell you today, there is a presence, there is an anointing, there is an oil on you. You say, I don't even know what you're talking about. There was an aroma that drew you into this house for this moment. You say, I don't even believe in God, but the presence of God, the aroma drew you into this place. You can't even tell me why you're here, but you're here because of the aroma. Ah, the aroma that's on your life today. I'm trying to communicate in this moment that there's an aroma that's powerful. She didn't want to just walk in just by herself. She needed some oil 
on her life. And she didn't just come in with just being presence and not just having presence on her, but she came in with presentation. Mm -hmm. She came in not just smelling good. She came in looking good. Mm -hmm. she, the Bible tells us that when Naomi told her to get prepared, that she needed to put on her best clothes. Uh, you see, when she came in, she looked like mourning. When she came in, she looked like sackcloth. If you, you recognize when she came in, she didn't look, she looked like her yesterday. You can't go into your tomorrow looking like your yesterday. Mm, I'm trying to communicate to you today that there is some presentation. There is a staging today in your life. And, and too many people are waiting for their promotion to start their presentation. Let me tell you something today. You got to start your presentation before you ever are promoted. You got to go ahead and act like you got this corner office before you even got it. You got to already believe and start dressing for success because you believe that the God is about to open up the door. Do I got a witness? witness in this place. Uh, do I, do I, you can't wait till it comes. You got to already be prepared. for. That's why you've been passed up, some of you, because you haven't understood the presentation of your life. You, you can't keep on acting like you're 20 when you're 35. Come on, somebody. You can't keep on acting like a boy when God's called you to be a man. You can't keep on acting like a child when God's called you to be a, a daughter of the king. It's time for you to present yourself. Mm. Mm -hmm. There's a presentation. Now, I like to be up in a place that has great presentation. I don't know about you. I, I don't like to go to any hotel that I got to check the closet. Come on, I got to check the mattress. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't want to ask the question, do they got anything crawling in this place? I, I tend to stick with the Hilton family or the Marriott family. I'm not promoting them at this time. Their stock is down, but praise the Lord. Hopefully they'll reopen. I, like, I have no problem staying in a Hampton Inn. Clean. What I like about the Hampton Inn is, is that it's clean, the bed is soft, the pillows are nice, and it's got free breakfast. I like to go to a Hampton Inn that has the iron made like Texas. Oh, my God. Oh, I, when I come into Texas, if I'm staying in San Antonio or Dallas, uh, put me in a place where they glorify Texas. Come on, where I can put down my waffle and I can open it up and it's Texas. I can eat a little bit of Houston, a little bit of Dallas, a little bit of Austin. San, by the time I got El Paso all down over and it's amazing. But, but Hampton Inn only is the basement for the presentation. Then you go to another level. You go to a Hilton Garden Inn, a little bit nicer. Then you go to a Hilton. And then if you're not careful, you, if you're on the Marriott side, you go to uh, Ritz-Carlton. And every level, there is a different type of presentation. They start leaving mints on your bed. They start putting you bathrobes. You got slippers. You, you don't even wear bathrobes. You don't even wear slippers. But when you go to those kind of places, you put them on. You put them on. You wear them like, you, like they look good. You look, you go in the mirror. You look at yourself. Say, oh my God. Look at me. You call the concierge. Say, can I have some food? They, they bring you up food service. You know what I'm talking about? Full restaurant. I mean, they take care of you. They call, you call them and say, can you pick up my car? Call the valet. You know valet. You didn't have a valet at Hampton Inn, but when you get to a certain level, they'll start bringing cars. What I'm trying to tell you is, is that if you're going to go higher, you've got to present yourself in a place. That is in a different perspective that you are not like what you used to be, but you are becoming what God has designed for you to be. You're starting to wear the clothes that God has. You know that he's got some tailored clothes. I'm not talking about physical. I'm talking about some spiritual clothes that he wants to tailor. That you present yourself a, a living sacrifice, a, a child of God today, wrapped up in his righteousness. And you arrive prepared for what God has for you. That's what we've been doing. We've been doing so many things in this facility, and not just on a systematic level, but even on a spiritual level. We've been preparing for what God is going to do. You know, we are seven days away from Pentecost Sunday. We are seven days away from Legacy Launch, from a new beginning. We're not just turning a new chapter. We're starting a new destiny, a new direction, a, a new uh, 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 epitaph over our I mean, a new dynamic. 
dynamic of our life where we're putting on what was old and we are taking off what is old and we are putting on something that is new. Are you ready to wear the legacy that God has for your life? I'm trying to tell somebody. And she didn't just come in with presentation. She came in and she had posture. After everything she did, there is the, the inward preparation, and now there is the outward pre- preparation. She came in under strict instructions. Mm. Her posture. She said, go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know you're there until he's finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, note the place where he's lying. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down, and he will tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. You've done everything you're supposed to do, Ruth. You've prepared yourself. Now you got to get in the right posture. And she came not at his head, not at his side. She came at his feet. She lied in a place of honor. Mm. Honor. She honored this man. Can I tell you today that the doors of opportunity swing on the hinges of honor? Mm. Knowing how to honor, honoring God, honoring your season, honoring this house, honoring. There's a, there's a spirit of honor that say, God, I didn't get here by my Self. I recognize if you ever see a turtle on a fence post, you know he didn't get there by himself. He recognized that she recognized it was the Lord's hand on my life. I came here with nothing and I'm I'm gonna leave here with nothing. I, I recognize the honor that is on my life. It's not mine, it belongs to you. Everything that I own, I honor. And then she waited patiently posture of patience. I, I got to be honest today. I, patience is not my best virtue. That's why God gave me five kids. Mm, tell, I'm going to tell you what pay, five kids will do. It'll teach you patience. Patience. Mm-hmm. She was willing to wait. She's willing to wait. And here's the problem. We think that waiting is wasting, but there is never anything wasted when you're waiting on the promise. Because here's the deal. God was saying through Naomi, you've done everything you can do. Now let me do what I do best. Come on. What I do best. I I just need you to see that that she waited until he was awakened. And then this wasting stage, it was not a wasted stage. It was a staging of God preparing and presenting her for God to open up the door. And I'm I'm so amazed at what God does, that, that he is the one that does the opening of the door. He's the one that does the elevation. He's the one that that causes her to be seen and to be sensed. It is God. And I'm just trying to show you today that somebody in this room or maybe somebody that's watching online feels like maybe they have been waiting too long. But can I tell you today, nothing in the waiting season is a wasted season. As long as you're in the right posture. She kept her posture. She kept her place of submission. God, I trust you. God, only you can do it. Only you can do it. Come on, somebody say that. Only he can do it. Only he can do it. Only he can turn the hearts of men. Only he can turn turn it around. Only he can bring the breakthrough. Only he can open the door. Only he can heal. I've done everything I know to do. Now everything is up to you, Lord. It belongs to you. Come on, stay with me today. Mm -hmm. Because your promotion is tied to your preparation. Mm -hmm. Just stay in the right place. 
It's not the shifting of your feet. It's the shifting of your heart. It's what God is doing. Everything in the first chapter was about location. And this is all about transformation. She's not moving from one place to the next. She's moving from one posture to the next. 